Good morning to you. This is Kakaki Social. I'm Rena Obozege. Welcome to Tuesday's edition. I thank you so much for being a part of it. Now, the rift between the Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki and his deputy Philip Shaibo appears to be festering as Obaseki has disbanded the media crew attached to Shaibo. Now, this may not be unconnected to the incident at the 60th anniversary of Midwest referendum in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, on Monday, where Shaibu's media aides were prevented from entering the hall based on orders from above, as it was said, before Shaibu finally left the center. Now, responding to the development, the State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, Chris Neihari, said, contrary to the accreditation protocol that was established for media coverage of the event, the deputy governor's media aide tries to force their way into the hall where Shaibu and other dignitaries were already seated. Now, besides this, on Sunday at the Thanksgiving service of Edo at 32, as you would see on your screen, it was reported that a security personnel attached to the governor prevented Shaibu from greeting his principal in church. Now, Obaseki has directed Chaibu to henceforth request for coverage of his activities from the Ministry of Communication and Orientation as his press team has been sent out of the government house. Like, your press away from you is basically seizing your voice. But let's see. Funcha says, shameful. Obaseki stooped so low with this kind of directive. For Runzi, he says, Shaibu has committed no crime if he intend to run for governor. I know it will be equity if the seat is zoned to Essen Senatorial District because they have been neglected. In that regard, Shaibu has been loyal to his principle. He doesn't deserve the embarrassment. Broby says both men should grow up. Obaseki ought to be the bigger man. Lend him your ear and listen to what he has to say. You are not bound by what you listen to. No need to sacrifice governors because of personal rift. The state and administration suffer like this. For White Lion, he says Philip Shaibu with Godwin Obaseki ganged up against Oshomole, same man that brought both of them to limelight in politics, was disgraced and insulted. Now, look at Kama working. Now, let's see what will happen in all of this. It's a developing story, and we'll be sure to keep our eyes right there. Some residents of the Nagua de Bayelsa state capital have invaded and looted a warehouse where palliatives were kept. The warehouse located in Banshia suburb of the state capital was where the 2022 flood palliatives were stored. Now it was gathered that some of the food items carted away by the looters had since expired, but that didn't stop them from looting anyways. <laughs> Oh, my snowman. This is not a rama sauce. Oh, my Okay, so taking turns to loot right there, claiming that it is for them. But we do not know if it is, you know, leftover from 2022 flood palliative or the new one, if it has gotten to their state for the fuel subsidy removal. Um, Hunoma says it is not stealing. They are the actual owner of it. If mountain did it go and meet Moses, then Moses will go and meet the mountain. Please use the right word at the right time. The food belonged to them. It was said that they stole. And 
and he's correcting us right there. Abdullah says, why government keep all these items for long while it's people suffering from subsidy removal? I am not supporting them, but sometimes something has to be done to avoid the occurrence of evil activities. For Umar, it's a well done by essence. Nobody has a monopoly of breaking law and order. For decades, our politicians are breaking law and order with impunity and it's becoming a norm among them. For another user, Abba Musa, he says, this is very good, but please don't invade people's shops. People must eat to live. The level of hunger in Nigeria is so terrible. Definitely, I think that um, final word there is so key as you continue. Please know whose property or whether it actually belongs to you or fellow people like you are going through the same stuff as you are going through. But let's move away from that to say that the presidency has disclosed that the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, will not have a rethink before relieving any minister of his or her duties if they underperform. Now, the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngalali, made this known on Monday at an interview with newsmen. He stressed that the president has set benchmarks um, with timelines for all members of his cabinet and failure to achieve the set goals may cost the minister's job. There are clear benchmarks based on, uh, you know, time-based frameworks uh, that would allow each minister to know whether or not they are performing up to the expectations that he has set out for them. Uh, the other point that I think is important to note is that anyone who fails to perform up to expectation, their job will not be safe. Uh, the, anyone who performs up uh, to expectation uh, can expect uh, to be empowered to do more. Uh, this is a president who is going to ensure that the administration succeeds on the basis of the work that is going to go in to uh, the fulfillment of the renewed, renewed hope mandate by each of the uh, members of the Federal Executive Council uh, that, that uh, commence work from today. Okay, so let's see how this met netizens yesterday. For Popo Alai, it says, nice one, Mr. President, should give them six month probation to think that we have a minister yet. <laughs> if you can, you are in your, okay? If you can, you are in. If you can't, you are out, okay? So another user, Child of Grace, it says, we would definitely hold him by his words. We are sure of some that won't perform, but we are giving them benefit of doubt, okay? For Yakubo, it says, this is how it is supposed to be. If you're not performing well, then the door is open. The door is open. Is it to go out or to... I don't know. But let's have our final story for the day that says that the United States has picked holes and scored lows in Zimbabwe's last week presidential election for failing to meet regional and international standards for credibility. According to some civil society organizations, officials of the Zimbabwe Election Commission, ZEC, pressured election observers to sign altered polling station resort forms and the U.S. is saying that in their uh, preliminary report that problems with the transparency, independence, fairness and credibility of electoral processes on due restrictions on the rights to freedom of assembly and association and freedom of expression that are guaranteed by Zimbabwe's constitution and reflected in regional guidelines report of voter intimidation and the disenfranchisement franchisement of candidates, particularly women. We are also gravely concerned by the arrest of civil society members that we believe were conducting lawful non-partisan election observation work. That is part of um, the U.S. report on the election last week. Special Esther says, is that all? You won't talk tough now, but wait until the citizens take laws into their hands. Then you scream democracy. It's all right. For Omar Iya teacher, he says, who made the USA the judge to preside over or set standards for the African election and leadership? Or do Africans poke nose at America's election or affairs or determine its credibility? For blessing patron, he says, as long as they don't have nothing to gain from you, they can boldly say whatever they want, but when they can use you, to their benefit, they invite you to White House to give you their playbook. 
Finally, unknown lawmaker says three years later, Donald Trump still believes the 2020 U.S. election was stolen and did not meet international standards. The U.S. should take its knee off the necks of third world nations on election matters. Oh, well, let's see. If you give to people, you would always expect some level of accountability from them. So maybe we have to be independent, first of all. But here. Yeah, that's everything on Kakaki Social this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of it. If you may reach out to us on WhatsApp only, no calls, please. Our number is 0811543670. <laughs>